Next on Animal Attractions TV. When two sons leave the nest, they leave mom with two wild and crazy dogs. Our pet trainer 911 is to the rescue. Did you know that play and exercise teaches your puppy vital behaviors? We'll find out. Plus, the secrets to understanding your cat. Next on Animal Attractions TV. Do your friends constantly tell you how well behaved your dog is? Well, that's not the case in our next story. In fact, this single mom has double trouble from this destructive pair. Time for Coach Ronald White, our pet trainer 911. Jackie Barrett is a single mother of two teenage boys, but when it was time for them to go off to college, they came up with a brilliant gift idea. They made a decision and decided that mom needed two dogs to replace the two sons that were leaving. Two Welsh Springer Spaniels. When the boys had to go away to school, I was used to the dogs being uh, playful, I was used to the, their high energy, but I was not used to dealing with all of that by myself. They were driving me nuts. One of the things I would do when I came home from work very frequently would be to sit down on the couch and either read or watch the news a little bit, and the cats would come up and sit next to me. But now, with the dogs, they decided that it was their territory, and the cats were no longer someone that could sit next to me. Troy, Carter, stop! And then the nice, calm, peaceful end of the day became a circus. I walked out of the kitchen one day, and the dogs were upset that I had left them, and they attacked the kitchen blinds. What in the world do you think you're doing? Stop it! The worst thing was, one day I came into the dining room, and one of the dogs had actually eaten the entire cushion to the dining room chair. With all of the damage that the dogs were doing to the house, I had to put them in a crate. And these were active young dogs that needed exercise. This was a real concern to me. So she called me up, told me the situation. Her kids were going off to school and that these dogs were out of control. And she had two of them, two boys. So she works. And so she would come home and she wouldn't have the energy that those dogs had a lot of energy. They had cooped up energy because they were in those crates. How you doing, Ronald White? Ron, nice to meet you, Jack mm -hmm. Barrett. Come on. Okay. Oh, there's them boys. Oh, so you have the cage cut out where they can go back and forth? Back and forth, yeah. Oh, okay. So Ron and I talked about some of the things that the dogs were doing, and he felt very comfortable he could handle that. Um, but then he talked to me about um, how much uh, activity I could give the dogs with my schedule. I also said to him, you will accomplish a miracle if this can be done. Bye. I began training the same week that the dogs began training. What things he thought were most important for me to do were first uh, build some uh, cardiac reserves. So either the uh, reclining bicycle or the treadmill, and then go on to exercises that would help me control the dogs while I was walking. So I needed lower body activities um, for strengthening my uh, leg muscles, and, uh, and then I did some upper body work uh, so I could hold on to the leashes. Coach White will usually take a dog home with them for 30 days and spends the first few days just building a relationship with them. When I let him loose, the dominant dog will be the leader and the other dog will follow him all over the yard. So I knew I had to start working with the dominant dog, working him first. Stop, sit, down. He then starts to teach the Heel. basic commands as a foundation for correcting Stop. the dog's specific sit. behavior issues. You know, gave him down. some sit, some down, his basic obedience, gave him some structure. Please, please, please. He was a little headstrong. He would try me and I knew it but I wasn't gonna give up because you gotta be consistent with them. Come here. You have to win to become the big dog. Down. And then we'll bring them together and work them together like a team of horses. And then, because they both know the same commands. When those dogs hear that whistle, I would pull them into me and I'd give them a treat. So I was letting them register 
the treat with the whistle. That way she can take the dogs to the dog park, and when she's ready to go, she blows the whistles, the dogs come to her, they get a treat. That way she can handle both of them. Come here, time out. I wanted to shoot some time out for each dog to have their own separate place, because we all need our own space. We take him to it, make sure all four paws go on the bed, and we pull down and say the word timeout. And we're consistent with it. That way when she sits down on her furniture, the dogs can go to their beds. The cats can come out, she can read a book. Good boys. Good. When uh, Coach Ron brought the dogs back, I was amazed to see how they behaved. Timeout, timeout, timeout. Are they my dogs? <gasps> And I said to him, you did achieve that miracle. And he said to me, now it's your turn. You have the leash, you have the power, it's, it's your Place. job now. I feel so much better. I, I am stronger, I am uh, able to do more things with a lot more energy. And one of the other really big pluses is that I've lost 15 pounds. Well, you're going home, your mother's over here. When Ron brought the dogs back for the final time, uh, I really felt that I was ready for them. Um, I felt stronger, I felt uh, excited about this, and I felt I could handle what uh, I had accepted uh, as a challenge to raise these dogs by myself. You did a wonderful job. Oh, I so much appreciate this. You just call me anytime you need me. I will, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I take them places that I could not do before. Uh, they're behaved enough that I don't feel that uh, if they're not caged or locked up, that I can't do anything with them. They're a part of my life now that they weren't before. I said to Ron that I wished that one day I would be able to come home and have the cats sitting quietly at my side as I had been used to, and the dogs also on the floor nearby, and all five of us living together in harmony. And we've gotten to that point. When I want to have a good time, I may hit an amusement park and the big rides. But what about our pets? Where do we take our canine friends when they want to have a good time? One answer, the dog park. For many dogs, it's a thrill to be off leash and run free. But without the proper preparation, a trip to the dog park can be a disappointment and traumatic for you and your pet. So here's a few simple tricks to help keep you and your pet safe and happy while at the dog park. Nitro, come. Number one, your pet should know the command come before ever attempting a big park experience. That means when you call your pet to your side, they come to you. Number two, always be aware of where your dog is and what they are doing. You are responsible for your pet's behavior. Number three, only bring well socialized pets to the dog park. If you have a shy, timid, weak or excited pet, they can be a fight lure to a dog that sense their weakness. Number four, do not bring overexcited dogs into the park. Avoid this by taking your dog on a good walk before entering the park. Pets will be more relaxed and calm when they meet other dogs. A dog park is a place to go with your dog as an extra bonus, but not as a substitute for your daily walks. Number five, always pick up after your dog and check for posted rules for that specific park. Last but not least, try to make sure everyone has a great time while at the dog park. Remember, have fun. What's the reason we love puppies so much? Well, there's companionship, unconditional love, they lower our blood pressure, they could grow up to be great burglar alarms, but I'm gonna go with they make us happy. They're fun! You're a fun little fellow, aren't you? Yes. Puppies start playing at four weeks old with their litter mates, and if you're game, they'll play with you their entire lives. Playing is instinctual for dogs. In the litter, it's actually a built-in training tool that keeps their hunting, fighting, and bonding skills sharp. Likewise, his games with you aren't only fun, they're also valuable. They strengthen your bond and teach him important behaviors like searching, retrieving, and obedience. And of course, the exercise is good for both of you. Eight to 10 week old puppies love to watch a ball roll across the floor and will instinctually go after it. Make sure as your puppy grows that his ball is always big enough that it can't get caught in his throat. It's very important because a ball lodged in an air passage can be fatal. These two balls are too little for this puppy already, but these two are fine. And then when he gets bigger, you can take him outside for a game of fetch. 
When they're little, you can also play find the toy type games. Find the toy. Go and find it. Find the toy. Use one of his balls or toys that has his scent on it, and at first, just hide it from view. Once he gets the idea, you can hide it in more difficult places to find, and then tell him, where's the ball? This reinforces his use of smell and thinking, and can be good preparation for tracking training later on. Another fun game is to simply hide from your puppy. Ready to play hide and seek? He'll naturally look for you, and when he finds you, oh, make it a big happy reunion. Good boy, you found me. You're such a smart puppy. Chase is also a great game. It strengthens your bond and reinforces your dog following you. But be sure to never reverse the chase by becoming the chaser. That will teach your puppy that it's fun to run away from you. And that could be dangerous when it's in the wrong direction. Also, in selecting a dog, make sure you know what your lifestyle expectations for your dog will be. If you're looking for a running companion, you may want to pick a dog like a Border Collie or a German Shepherd. They're born to run. You can set everyone up for success by simply starting with a few wise choices. Another game to be wary of is tug. Dogs love to play tug with each other, but it's not a good idea to play that with you. It teaches him to fight with you and to ignore commands like drop it or leave it. If your puppy has something he shouldn't have and won't let go, point two fingers at his nose and firmly say, drop it. Drop it! Then give him the toy that he can play with and say, good dog. Agility games are great. They not only burn off excess energy, but they increase your puppy's coordination and confidence and his ability to focus on and communicate with you. And you can start in your own house. I started by building these little cardboard tunnels out of boxes and I cut the ends off. But you have to remember that your puppy's joints are still forming, so you don't want to stress them with excessive jumping. If you really love agility games, you can join an agility club or get an agility trainer. You might even have a future champion on your hands. Good start. What a good boy you are. Running with your dog is great. But remember, a young dog must grow into your running routine. They overheat much faster than you do, so watch them carefully for signs of fatigue. Then gradually build up the distance. As they approach the 12-month mark, most dogs ideally need about an hour of exercise a day, depending upon their size and energy level. This schedule not only delivers an exercise benefit, but it expends energy, which makes them more manageable and obedient. I walk or play with my giant puppies, Angel and Smiley, an hour every day. This is a great time to practice heel, sit, and down for a whole hour. And they're having so much fun that they see the commands as part of the game. Now that's a real win-win. In the end, puppy playtime is all about bonding with your dog. The added benefits are training, exercise, and fun for both of you. And when you put it all together, it really doesn't get much better than that. Some of you might be wondering why it's a big deal to have an overweight pet. Part of the problem with pets being overweight is that it can lead to a disease process such as diabetes. Diabetes is a condition just in pets as it is in people. Most of what we see in animals is a juvenile type onset of diabetes, even though they're adults. And the reason is that the pancreas doesn't produce any insulin. It's a complete shutdown of insulin, and so we have to use insulin injections to treat these animals. We apply special diets along with that, but insulin is the mainstay. The signs that you're going to see with diabetes in your pet are primarily an excess water consumption and excess urination. It becomes a situation where these animals are wanting to drink all the time, so it becomes very obvious. The other thing you're going to see is a real sudden weight loss that uh, is unexplainable. Your pet is still eating well, but they're continually losing weight. And when you see these signs, you definitely need to take them into a veterinarian and have some simple tests run. If your pet's diagnosed with diabetes, it's certainly not a reason to panic. There are treatments available, and and everyone can do the treatments. It involves giving insulin injections, in most cases twice a day, and it's real easy to learn how to give injections. I know it's a scary thought, but giving an insulin injection is a very, very small needle, not painful, and very easy for people to learn. Two more real important issues when treating a pet for diabetes. One is diet, and you want to use a special diet that's very high in protein and low in carbohydrates. And the other thing is to give your dog plenty of exercise. Do this regularly, that'll help control the weight issue also. 
There is no true prevention for diabetes in animals. Obviously controlling the weight is going to help and that's something that's very, very important. But the most important thing you can do for your pet is bring them in at least annually as they get older, semi-annually to the veterinarian to have a good physical exam done and then periodically have blood tests run. And there are certain breeds that are predisposed to diabetes, schnauzers, cocker spaniels, basset hounds. We see it in a lot of larger breeds like labs and golden retrievers also. We see it a lot in cats. It's really not breed specific specific in cats, but cats we see it a lot in the overweight ones and weight issue seems to be a real problem in the cats. Feeding your dog a high quality food throughout its life, regular visits to the veterinarian, and exercising your dog regularly will do the most for your pet so she can live or he can live a long, healthy life. Dash is recovering from surgery and still needs special medication to ensure that he recovers properly. We all know that pet care can be very expensive, but there's an area where you can save. Did you know that many pet medications are actually the same as human medications? That's right. That means you can take your pet prescription to many human pharmacies and have them filled, and many give free prescriptions. Some pharmacies offer really good family discount programs that include your pet, that have generic medications starting at $4 a month, and some even offer free antibiotics. Now to get the best possible price, check with many pharmacies in your area that have plans that include your pet. Then take that prescription to the pharmacy that you've chosen with your name and your dog's name next to it. Or you can have your vet call it in like you would do your own prescription. It's just that simple. And in no time, you're both feeling great because your pet's healthier and you have just saved yourself a ton of loot. Who was your favorite companion when you were growing up? Who could you depend on for fun and companionship? Maybe you were one of those lucky kids whose best pal was the family dog. Well, I'd like to introduce you to this delightful little companion. He's lively, joyful, and insists on being right in the middle of all the family's activities. He's a Maltese, and family members of all ages insist that he is the perfect companion. He gives kisses too. Louie and I are a lot alike. We both have the same energy level, but when he's hyper, I'm hyper. We feed it off of each other's energy. But when he's calm, I'm calm, and he's right there next to me always. It's a fabulous breed. They're so cute and lovable, and you know, they've got so much personality. Louie just fit into our house so well with the three girls and very active kids and active lifestyle. We need a dog that was independent. Well, we like a lap dog, and he's a great lap dog. He's good to snuggle with, and he'll curl up with you in bed, but when you don't want him, he'll go curl up with our other dog and land in the dog bed. Maltese are great with children. I think having a dog is an important life lesson for all children. In the 16th century, the loving nature and portable size of the Maltese captured the hearts of aristocrats and nobles. Two notable owners of that time were Queen Elizabeth I and Mary, Queen of Scots. But the history of the breed goes much further back. In fact, it's been estimated that the breed first appeared around 8,000 years ago, making the Maltese one of the most ancient of dog breeds. The Maltese was also known as the Comforter, mostly because it was believed that these little dogs possessed healing powers. Ailing people would place them on their chests and stomachs, and their loving nature and petite size made them the perfect heating pad. The Maltese is a toy breed dog that usually weighs under seven pounds. Unless they're trimmed like Cosmo here, they usually have a long, silky, white, floor-length coat. People fall in love with the long, beautiful coat, but it does require a lot of grooming. Unless you have them trimmed shorter, which makes it a lot easier to maintain. In spite of their small size, Maltese's tend to be fearless. In fact, many are indifferent to dogs much larger than them. Although the Maltese does not require a lot of exercise, a daily walk is a good idea to reduce the chance of problem behaviors. As a toy breed, it's important to teach your children proper handling as to not injure your puppy. Because the Maltese has no undercoat and has little to no shedding, they are considered to be largely hypoallergenic. Generally a very healthy breed, your veterinarian will still watch for some common ailments such as collapsing trachea and knee problems. This breed needs very little outdoor exercise. As a matter of fact, your home makes the perfect playground and your family members make the perfect playmates. That's all he really needs. 
and after a fun little romp, he is the perfect cuddler. I think Louie loves us all. He's just a very loving, easygoing puppy. Who knows more about why cats behave in their mysterious ways than Roger Tabor? We say no one. He has devoted more than 30 years pioneering studies and observing cats in over 25 countries. He's here to share his knowledge and experience so you can enjoy the benefits that come with a better understanding of this wonderful creatures that we all call cats. Cats have the most amazing abilities and super senses. And why should that be, all this package in one small animal? Well, the reality is they are superb predators. Cats have incredible eyes. And this cat has six times better vision than I do at night. But what it has problems with is the daytime. With that degree of sensitivity, it's going to be able to control the amount of light coming in. So cutting it down to a very fine degree is needed. And that's why they go, instead of to a circle, just to a slit. OK, then. Who has the most sensitive, high-pitched hearing? Dogs or cats? It's cats every time. And if you think about it, there's a very good reason for that. Dogs, after all, go for, when they were wolves, prey of a bigger size that makes a lower sound. Cats hunt small prey that make those high-pitched squeaks. So it's important through evolution that the cat had hearing that could home in on that. And you also need to be able to hear if something's going on behind you. So having ears that swivel are incredibly important. There's a tiny little pocket right down the bottom of the ear here. And that gives the flexibility that enables the cat to fold its ears right back. And it's also part of its signaling. Because when it's angry or when it's frightened, the ears are able to fold or almost flatten down. It's part of cat communication. The sense of smell in a cat is very important. Somewhere between that sense of taste in the mouth and that sense of smell is another sense. They have to flicker with their tongue and they look as if they're concentrating inside, but really they're just trying to get those molecules in. And it enables them to tell all sorts of interesting stuff about the sexual state of another cat. That feels very rough on my finger. And the reason for that is because the cat's tongue is not as flat as ours is. It's covered all over with spiny, backwards-pointing hooks, and that enables it both to rasp food off of whatever it's eating quite easily, but at the same time to act as a comb for its coat. If you're a nocturnal hunter that climbs trees, you need to be able to feel your way about as much as to see your way about, and that's why this ring of whiskers around the face of the cat is so important and they're just wider than the width of its head. If the whiskers can go through, the head can go through. If the head can go through, the body can go through. It's in the claws that you really see the essence of the cat, because this is an animal that's an independent animal that does all the hunting by itself. So it's very good at jumping onto things, and then it has to manipulate them. These claws on these paws can do all of this sort of stuff with their prey. Cats are able to stand taller than you might expect because they walk up on their toes. And that's part of the whole kit that enables them to run very fast. And they are an explosive sprinter. These have a very flexible spine. That spine enables the whole body length of the stride to expand by a matter of some inches. One of the things that most people know about cats is if they fall from a height, they're able to land on all four paws. Have you thought how remarkable that is, to be able to do that? Because they've got ears that are not that dissimilar to us on the inside, semicircular canals that enable them to know up from down. And they've got eyes like we have that can enable them to see the horizon. But they can think about things so quickly that as they fall through the air, they can rotate their body. But the great reason, really, why cats have this facility 
is because they are animals that can run up and down trees and hunt up there. That's how they evolved as these semi-arboreal, semi-tree hunters. And when you're running around in branches, you may well fall off and having this facility to land on all four feet successfully made all the difference in their evolution. Cats just love playing in plants and they sometimes eat them. But how do you know that the plants in which your cats are playing or eating are safe for them? To ensure that you are providing a nice, healthy environment for your cat, I suggest planting yourself and your cat a plant garden that you can place inside or out of your house. Now, there are many plants that are good for cats, but one that we know that they'll love is catnip. And then all you'll need is a nice pot, some potting soil, and some water. But first, you just take some potting soil, get a nice big scoop, and you place that into your plant. I do a couple just in case plant continues to grow with the roots and everything. Then you take some water, just to dampen the bottom a little bit. Then you take your full grown plant, place that inside of the pot. And you take more potting soil, and you cover your plant, and try to keep your plant central to the pot so it grows nice and straight. And you pour in a little bit more water. Now water is essential to plants, most plants anyway and make sure that you put this plant in an area that gets at least five hours of sun a day so it continues to grow and flourish for your cat. Now, all plants are not helpful for cats and harmful to some. So, for more information about what plants could be harmful for your cat, just log on to our website at animalattractionstv.com. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.